Hello everyone. Today in this video, I am going to step by step show you on how to install Android Studio Flamingo 2023 and its SDK tools on Windows 10 also applicable on Windows 11. Also I will show you how to run and test your application using your Android phone and also a virtual emulator. Last but not least, towards the end of this video, I will show you how to fix the duplicate class, Kotlin Collections error, just in case you also experiencing the error when building your application before proceeding with the installation. We should ensure that the specifications match the recommended specifications, or at least are no worse than the minimum recommendations. Just go to this site, developerandroid.com. We can see here specifications based on the operating systems. As an example here you can see, for a Windows operating system, you must use Windows 64-bit and RAM the minimum is 8GB. And the recommended RAM is 16GB or more. Scroll down to see specifications for Mac OS, Linux and Chrome OS. Now let's download and install Android Studio. You may search in Google. But if you already in developerandroid.com slash studio. Like in the video scroll down to select files. There are several files that can be downloaded. Depending on the platform, I will choose Windows, as I am using Windows operating system. I will select the first one. Click it to start download. Agree and start download. This will take a few moments. You have to wait until the download is completely finished, then run the file. Click next. I would select virtual device, then click next. In my case, I will use the default folder. You may change it so that it is installed in a different folder. Click next. This will take a while. I will pause and make this video faster. Select Start Android Studio and then click Finish. Well now Android Studio is running. Before we use it we first check whether the SDK is there. For first time use generally the SDK is not installed and we must first download and install it. Here's how. Go to More Action and then select the SDK Manager. SDK stand for Software Development Kit. Okay, we are in Android SDK Settings menu. Here we can see the package name, API level and revision. In status column we also can see which one is already installed, not installed or whether update available. We are going to use or target Android SDK platform 34. So this is the API that we are going to use in order to develop Android applications. And as new versions are released, we will target those versions. So make sure this package is installed if it is not installed. Make sure to check this checkbox here and then click on apply button on the bottom right to install this package. Just for example if I would like to remove this version. So I am going to uninstall this by unchecking this box and click apply. Okay, it's gathering package information. Let's wait for confirmation prompt. OK, we can see how much hard disk space will be freed. Let's click OK. We have to wait until it's finished. Next, let's check the SDK tools by clicking this tab. We can see that all required package are installed. Click this checkbox to see package details. If you find one or more package status is is not installed, you should install it. Or if the status is update available, that means there are updates for that package. At this stage we only need the latest one. Click this checkbox to see package details. 
we can see that Android SDK Platform 34 is installed. Okay, we can see that we have the latest updated SDK, so next. Let's try to build our first application. So here select project and click new project. On the left menu select phone and tablet. And then select basic view activity. Click next. Name is a name for our application, just put it my first app. The package name should be unique to your application. And this is the name that will actually differentiate your application from other application live on Google Play. So if you are going to release your Android app to Google Play Store, make sure that the value that you enter here is a unique value. And as you can see, this is a domain name and it is written in reverse order. If you have your own domain name, that's great. Because now you can make sure that the value that you enter here is a unique value. And no one else has used that value. But if you don't have your own domain name, make sure to just give it a unique value. The minimum SDK is the minimum version of Android operating system that can run our application. If I choose a PI to anyone, Android 7.0 Nogat. Our application will run on approximately 95.4% of the devices live on Google Play, so that's a pretty good number. But let's check on API 26 Oreo. Our app will run on approximately 90.4% of the devices live on Google Play. This is not bad, I will choose this API. And the reason for this is that now I can use more advanced features on my application. If you choose older versions, at the features that you will be able to add to, your application will be limited. However, you can also use some algorithms in order to make sure that the modern devices will be able to use those modern features and the older devices won't be able to use those features. You're going to learn more about that later. But for now I'm just going to use API 26 as the minimum SDK here for this application. And now I'm just going to click on finish. Okay, now wait, it is loading. This process, Gradle Sync is going to take a while. We have to wait until it's finished, so I will make this video faster. Gradle Sync is complete. We can see on the left side of the screen. There is the program structure I will discuss in the next video. Next to make sure the basic application that we have loaded runs well. We will try it on a virtual device Therefore, we will create a virtual device first. Just click this device manager tab, or you can go to tools menu here. Then select device manager. On virtual tab, click on create device. Here we need to select a hardware. In the left side, we can see hardware category, phone, tablet, Wear OS and so on. I will show you how to create phone virtual device. So just click phone, then we need to select advice definition. I will pick this 6.7 inch phone. Click next. We have to give it a unique name. We could just use this existing default name, but this time I will change the name. The name should better describe what this virtual device is about. So the default name given is actually good enough. After we give it a name, then click Finish. Creating Android Virtual Device is in progress. We can see the device that we just created is on the list. Click this Play button to launch the emulator. Okay, now we can run our application on the virtual device. Click this play button. We can see on the bottom right, Gradle build is running. We need to wait until it's finished. 
Okay, now it's launching app on our virtual device. The app is successfully launched. Next, I will connect my Samsung phone using USB cable and run our first application on it. We can see the Samsung phone listed in Physical Device Manager tab. Make sure we target it and run the application. We can see a message, Gradle Invocation finish with zero error. So now the application is running on Samsung phone. That is connected through USB. In this last section, in case you were not successfully build the application and got error messages duplicate class found or duplicate class kotlin.collections.jdk8.collections as seen in this video. For this test purpose, I have created a new project and then run it to see the error. We got the duplicate class error. To avoid this error, the workaround is go to Upgradle script. Copy the code in the description of this video and paste it here. Click Sync Now. It looks good. Okay, we have concluded this video. I hope you enjoy it and learn something new. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.